All right, welcome back to another video about Ren Fairs, this time about the clothing, which I am super excited about. If you haven't seen it already, I published a video last week that was like a Ren Fair survival guide. It's all the basics you need to know for not getting injured or dehydrated and how to have the best time you can. So check that out if you haven't seen it. It's also applicable to any other kind of festival situation. And if you have already watched it, then welcome to the next part. My favorite part of the Ren Fair is definitely dressing up. So I wanted to start off with some advice that I found on a different creator's channel, Tara O'Neill. She is more of a brave content creator creator and I'll link that in the description below but she called her advice double L double T I think and what those stand for is location lineup temperature and theme lineup doesn't really apply to the Ren Fair because it's not a concert there's no lineup of artists but the other three are really useful advice for the Ren Fair so first thinking about the location where you are will obviously really affect what kind of weather you're gonna get in LA where the Renaissance Pleasure Fair is you're pretty much gonna get sunny and warm all year round <laughs> whereas on the East Coast there's more of a potential for like sporadic rainstorms and a little less predictable weather so you're definitely going to be dressing differently depending on what those weather situations are. Temperature is kind of similar to thinking about location however in the case of like rain you're going to dress very differently for like a warm rain versus a cold rain. So for example this outfit I wore on a really cold rainy day the temperature was pretty cold and my theme was Viking. So with keeping the weather and the temperature in mind I wore a lot of layers. I had a linen tunic, like a wool kirtle, and a wool cape plus a big thing of just like fur fabric that I cut a neck hole into. <laughs> Wearing wool is really good in the rain as long as it's chilly outside. The wool will help keep you dry because it just kind of has natural water resistant properties. I would not wear the same outfit if it was really warm outside and humid and rainy though because I would just sweat and die. You also wouldn't want to wear a lot of cotton layers if it's a cold rain because all of your layers will get soaked through and they'll just kind of stick to you and they'll stay very wet because there's so many layers and you'll just be wet and cold the rest of the day. However, if it's a warm day and it's rainy, you might want to wear some light layers so that you can kind of take the layers off as you get too hot or if you want them to dry and wearing cotton when it's a warm rain will help everything dry a lot faster than if you were wearing, I don't know, polyester or wool. Generally, the weather at Ren Fairs is gonna be really hot because most Ren Fairs take place in the summer or the early autumn. However, there are a couple that happen in the winter. Ohio Ren Fair has their Yuletide Village in December, I think. And then I think Vermont also has a winter fair. And finally, theme is the most fun part to think about for your outfit. Most Ren Fairs do have themed weekends and those can be things like Pirate Weekend or Celtic Weekend. There's sometimes Viking Weekend and Oktoberfest. If you don't like the theme for that weekend, then it's really fun to come up with your own theme, especially if you have a group of friends to go with. Themes that I've done with my friends have been mushrooms, pirates, elves, and for Day of Wrong, me and Micah went as like sci-fi vampires. So it's really just up to your creativity what you want to dress as. Dressing for a theme also gives you a little bit more direction when you're looking for pieces, whether that's thrifting or online or at the Ren Fair. So going back to that Viking costume theme, the location for that was the Maryland Ren Fair. And usually while it's really hot and muggy, this time it was cold and rainy. And then the theme was just generic viking like the tv show i actually don't know that much about vikings i saw a lot of makeup looks that used runes and stuff on your face but i don't really know anything about the runes and the makeup so i didn't want to do anything that might be appropriative so i actually just took my makeup inspiration from a black veil brides music video so you can find inspiration from pretty much anywhere you don't have to stick to something that's like fantasy or historical you can literally take your inspiration from an emo band <laughs> another example of a costume that goes along these guidelines is my mushroom costume. My friends and I did a mushroom group and I decided to go as the inky cat mushroom. Again, you can check out that video in the description of making the mushroom hat. The location was the Maryland Run Fair and I knew that it was gonna be really hot that weekend. So it was very hot and muggy. The chemise that I wore probably wasn't the best choice because it is made of silk. So it does like stick to my body a little bit when it gets hot, but I also wore a light bodice. It wasn't one of my heavier, really boned bodices. The skirt that I wore was pretty light. And then the theme obviously was mushrooms. <laughs> so I made a mushroom hat and I kind of just took from my closet anything I thought would match. The skirt is actually from an old Zelda cosplay. The bodice is something that I got at the Ohio Ren Fair when I was a teenager. And then the chemise is something that I made for my Halloween costume a couple years ago, which also has a video. So you can check that out as well. And then the makeup idea was <laughs> inspired by the same Black Phil Brides music video actually. And I just added some like black drippy gradient details to it. I don't know. I'm very inspired by Black Veil Brides, I guess. <laughs> and then my last example of something that's a little bit less involved and more casual. I wore a really casual pirate outfit to the PA Ren Fair. It was super hot that day. So Pennsylvania's Ren Fair has a lot less shade than Maryland. So that's another thing to take into account is that Maryland has a lot of shade. So it's pretty easy to find a place that 
will feel a little cooler even if it's really hot but a ren fair like pa or in los angeles really doesn't have that much cover or shade so you should think more about how you are gonna not get sunburned and not get like heat exhaustion at those places so my casual pirate look was one that was appropriate for really sunny weather for really hot weather and then my theme was very loosely pirate i wore some pants that i made i think i have a video on that as well a button-up shirt that i thrifted so that i just like tied it and then i added a bunch of belts which is pretty much the staple of any pirate outfit is lots of belts it was more of like a cabin boy kind of pirate look rather than a pirate captain look but those kind of casual looks can be really useful when you are tired and don't have the energy to keep track of like 20 different costume pieces on your body so now that you've got some ideas for your costume what kind of materials should you be looking for and first and foremost you should be looking for natural materials those are going to be the most comfortable in any weather really synthetic fabrics are not really a good choice for anything that you're going to be spending a lot of time outside in one caveat to that of course is like the engineered fabrics that like rei and hiking companies come up with those obviously are made to be outdoor friendly but the general polyester costume that you're going to find on amazon is really going to be not comfortable at all so if you're going to the rent fair in the summer and it's going to be really hot outside then you want to go for fibers like cotton linen bamboo or hemp because all of those will keep you a lot cooler and breezier in the summer and another plus is that they're really easily dyed so if you find something that you really love in the wrong color it's very easy to change the color or to tea dye it so it looks a little bit more aged there's like silk tencel viscose and rayon are all better than polyester by far but they will be kind of uncomfortable because those fibers tend to cling to you when they get wet so they're really not as comfortable as fabric like I mentioned before which will kind of be more breezy and stand away from you if you're sweating like I mentioned before polyester is a really big no it traps sweat and heat and doesn't let anything out however when it's cold it won't keep enough heat so you'll still feel really cold and if you're going to a ren fair when it's cold outside you should look more towards wearing wool that will just keep you really warm and it'll keep any wet or snowy weather off of you <laughs> some of the brands that i really like for linen clothing which is probably the best fiber to wear in a really hot situation are linen nave which is the dress that i'm currently wearing and santa flor which i have so many videos about on my channel i'll link them all in the description so you can check those out another thing that you might want to consider when thinking about temperature is the color of your outfit so if it's really bright and sunny then you probably want to stick to lighter colors that will help reflect some of the heat if it is cold out then you probably want to stick to darker colors because that will help absorb some of the heat if you are not concerned about that and you're more concerned about the color and how it communicates your character or your costume then here's a couple tips for that if you are buying ren fair specific clothing then it doesn't really matter because stays and big skirts will communicate that it's ren fair or fantasy just by the nature of the silhouette and the cut however if you are thrifting or just looking for clothing that can double for your daily wear it will be a lot easier to find clothing that can be converted to ren fair clothing if you stick with more natural colors so that's like browns olive or like mossy greens uh beiges burnt oranges anything that you would see in a forest whether it's summer or autumn looking for those colors specifically will help you find pieces that are a lot easier to incorporate into your ren fair costume if however your favorite colors are like purple and lime green and you want that to be your run fair colors then you should totally go for it it will be a little bit harder to find things that you can incorporate into your outfit that are just like normal daily wear but you probably will be able to find run fair specific things at run fairs and like from etsy shops a lot of people do like those kinds of colors in their run fair garb so now that you know what you're looking for in terms of fiber and maybe cut and what color you want everything to be you can start just scouring the internet and you can buy ren fair clothing pretty much anywhere whether that's ren fair specific brands like maresca or brands that can kind of double for daily wear and ren fair clothing like sonda floor or just normal clothing that you can find at a thrift store listing all of the places that i get stuff for ren fair is a whole other video topic in itself because it would just take a long time so i'm just going to go over basics in this video and then i will be making another video with all of the places that i specifically like to shop for ren fairs first off you can obviously buy clothing at the ren fair this is probably the most expensive option aside from getting custom clothing made which there are also 
some really amazing brands that make custom fantasy clothing, but by purchasing clothing at the Ren Fair, you're supporting artisans and small businesses. I do have a video of me buying my entire outfit at the Ren Fair. You can check that out. The total came out to be about $800. I did buy a little bit more than was strictly necessary because I was trying to make a themed outfit, but it gives a good idea of what's available and how much it might be. If you do want to buy clothing at the Ren Fair, but you don't want to spend like whole outfit money, what I like to do sometimes is come in a base outfit and then I'll just buy like a bodice and some accessories and it will make me feel like I got the shopping experience, but all I had to do was add like one or two pieces to my outfit. Both of these are bodices that I bought at the Ren Fair. This one is from Bullseye and it was about $90. This one, I could not tell you how much it was. I bought this maybe in like 2007. But both of these were things that like I already had outfits that I was wearing and then I just bought a bodice while I was there and was able to just add to them. And then if you buy things that way, it's a really good way to slowly build up your collection rather than having to spend a whole ton of money on getting an entire outfit at once. Personally, I do think that a bodice and accessories are where your money is best spent at the Ren Fair because those items are a lot harder to get outside of the Ren Fair and they're also harder to make by yourself if you like to sew your outfits. If you do want to sew and you're a beginner, then skirts and chemises are a really good place to start anyways. So you can try making those yourself. They're essentially just a bunch of rectangles sewn together. They make really good beginner projects and then you can save your money for getting bodices. If you want things that are a little bit more wearable in daily life and you're into the cottage core aesthetic style, then a lot of the sustainable slow fashion kind of brands like Sonda Floor or Linen Nave are a really great place to find base pieces. I've made a whole bunch of Ren Faire outfits with this dress and then also the same dress in black that I also have. These just make really good base pieces and you can add a bodice over top of it and it already looks like a Ren Faire outfit. This dress that I'm wearing has these cute lacing details on the sides, but this is definitely something that I could come up with a theme to incorporate this dress into and wear to the Ren Faire. If you just generally search for linen and cotton dresses online, then you're bound to find something that you can incorporate into a Ren Faire outfit. Thrifting is also a really good option for finding Ren Faire clothes, especially if you kind of follow those guidelines I mentioned earlier about fiber and color. You should be able to find a lot of things that you can work with. Along with thrifting, there's places like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Ross. And you can also thrift online on places like ThreadUp, Depop, Mercari, and Poshmark. On Depop, Poshmark, and Mercari, you can kind of search by vibe. And you can also go into Google and search for items like that and click into the shopping tag and sometimes it'll just send you directly to these secondhand sites. You could search for things like cottagecore, fairycore, renaissance, fantasy, etc. A lot of these sellers do know who their target audience is so they put those keywords into the titles making it really easy to find. If you're searching on ThreadUp you can't search by keyword but you can search by brand and some good brands are like Free People, Anthropology, and Wild Fable from Target. You can also search for stuff like peasant tops and different types of fibers, I think. Some of the stuff that I've gotten thrifting, the casual pirate outfit that I showed you guys before, this shirt I did get thrifting. So it's really just like a basic tie button up shirt. I also got this scarf thrifting and I just add it to my pirate outfits also. Poet shirt, Michael wears this fairly frequently even though it's silk so it's not the most comfortable. It's kind of like cottage core dress that can be used for layering. These are all things that I found thrifting and can be added to run for outfits to make them a little bit more interesting. You can also get stuff at like Target and Hot Topic. This dress that I wore to the LA Ren Fair was from Hot Topic. This peasant skirt is also from Hot Topic. So if you're on more of a budget or the like sustainable slow fashion style is not really your style, you can check out places like Target or Hot Topic and they will have stuff that you can wear. And finally, you can make your own clothing, which is how I started off with a lot of my Ren Fair pieces. I had like one base outfit from when I was a teenager and it was all blue and purple. So it's not really my style now anymore. Those aren't really colors that I wear to the Ren Fair. I do tend to like black and red Red or like greens and browns and golds. So when I like rediscovered Ren Fairs and wanted to start going again, I just made a lot of my own stuff because I didn't want to spend the money on buying clothing. Made a bunch of chemises. I have a couple videos on chemises on my channel. I will link those below as well. They're super easy to make, really good project for beginners. You can just layer a skirt and a bodice on them and you are like good to go. I made this bodice vest here. There's also a video on that, but this is really useful for pretty much any kind of like hobbit or pirate or really anything. Besides chemises, if you're looking for a little bit more modern looking things that you can wear outside of the Ren Fair, I made this peasant top dress as well. Have a video for that too. <laughs> Have videos for lots of things. This is a really good base piece as well. So I can just wear this under a bodice and that's 
all I need to wear to a Ren Faire if I want to go really casual. Making Ren Faire clothing is a really good place to start if you are just learning how to sew because a lot of it is supposed to look kind of worn and older. If your sewing is uneven or you accidentally seam rip your fabric instead of your threads, you can just say it's a character choice. And generally, it's just a good way to level up your sewing skills. You can start with stuff like rectangular gathered skirts and chemises and work your way up to making your own bodices and then maybe an entire gown someday. Like I've mentioned, I have a ton of sewing videos on my channel, so I'll link a bunch that will be useful. I tend to find most of my patterns on Etsy, or I alter commercial patterns, or I do draft my own sometimes. But honestly, things like hobbit skirts and shifts, they're just rectangles. So moving on to accessories, there is a whole lot that I could say about accessories, so I will be making a second video that's a lot more in depth with specific brands, how I decide on accessories, I guess. But I do want to give you some basic information really quickly. Like I mentioned in the previous Ren Faire Survival Guide video, shoes are really important to get right. These are my two pairs of Ren Faire boots. I have one black and one brown. These are kind of like equestrian riding boots. These are lace-up general fantasy boots. These are what I wear all season. Both pairs of these are from Vintage Foundry Co. and I prefer real leather to pleather because it's just a lot sturdier. It feels a lot better at the end of the day. My feet don't really get as overheated and sweaty, I guess. I also prefer boots that go higher up on my leg rather than shorter shoes. If the lower cut shoes are all you have and they have good treads and are not gonna slip around and make you fall, I guess, then definitely wear those. But the reason that I prefer higher cut boots, Ren Faire's can be like really mulchy and dusty and sometimes stuff gets in my shoes. If they're higher cut, then they don't get in my shoes. And then also because the higher cut it is, the more ankle support I get and I have very weak ankles for some reason. <laughs> so I really need all the ankle support that I can get. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I absolutely will not wear sandals to the Ren Faire. I find that my feet get really gross if I wear sandals because they're open. Also really likely that you'll get stepped on because people are kind of crowded in. They're not always watching where they're going. I don't know. It's a weirdly easy environment to get stepped on in. And if you can avoid sandals, I would absolutely avoid sandals. Even if it goes with your costume over like something that goes less with your costume, I would really go for the foot protection over just letting your feet get stepped on. If you're between wearing sneakers and wearing shoes that are uncomfortable but go with your costume, I would say to go with the sneakers. You're gonna do a lot of walking at the Ren Fair and you'll be pretty miserable if your feet are just like blistered and hurting by the end of the day. If it doesn't go with your costume, that kind of sucks, but you'll remember having a bad day because you're in pain more than you'll remember having a bad day because your costume wasn't perfect. If you do want to invest in shoes specifically for the Ren Fair, then boots will always go with your costume. Even more modern looking boots can still be incorporated into Ren Fair costumes. For example, modern boots, I sometimes wear my docks, are very water resistant. I've walked through literal puddles of water with this and have not gotten my feet wet and like been out in the pouring rain. Sometimes I just go with my docks rather than with my more fantasy looking shoes because they are more comfortable. Of course, with docks, you have to break them in. With my vintage foundry shoes, I've never had to break those in. I just kind of condition them occasionally. If you do need to break your shoes in, please do that before the Ren Fair. You will be so miserable if you are breaking shoes in at the Ren Fair. There's so much uneven terrain and you have to stand pretty much all day and you'll just be miserable. So wear comfortable shoes is the moral of my whole shoe story. <laughs> Again, if you watched my last video, you will have seen the long list of things that I bring to the Ren Fair and you're gonna need to be able to hold that stuff somehow. So you have a few options for how to carry your things at the Ren Fair. For a really long time, this was my go-to bag. It kind of still is my go-to bag. It looks Ren Fair-ish enough. It blends in just fine. It's easy to carry and I can actually just stick another purse inside of it if I'm worried about like the open weave of this purse. Another option is a basket. I have seen a lot of people use baskets at the Ren Fair. Personally, I think they're kind of annoying because like, I don't know. The bag I can kind of just stick on my shoulder and it just lives there, whereas this I have to actually like hold. And you can find baskets really easily at the thrift store. Another option if you don't have a lot of like large things to carry is like a belt pouch. I made both this belt and this pouch, another video you can check out. I meant to make this large enough for my phone, it's not, but it does hold my wallet and it'll hold like some other things in there. So it does the job kind of. So those are kind of like the main three options. There are other options, but these three will get you pretty far. And if you make your own clothing, make it with pockets, then you can just hold stuff yourself and not have to worry about holding a bag at all. For jewelry, I'm gonna skip over the jewelry section. Do you think this one is a pretty good Renfair necklace? This is from Godly Natures and it's like the seraphim necklace. I think it's very cool. 
jewelry is a pretty wide category so i'll go more in depth with that in a later video you can get jewelry at the ren fair and i personally actually find jewelry to be one of the more affordable items it can be one of the more affordable items at the ren fair i've gotten a necklace there for ten dollars but jewelry can go up to hundreds if not thousands of dollars so you've got a super wide range you can get stuff for cheap if you want to and then you can also get more expensive stuff <laughs> if you're looking for crowns and headgear specifically sweetie has a lot of options and they've got a lot of really good variety so there's stuff like this crown this one is also from sweet v and i think this one's really cute and they also have stuff that looks a little bit more fantasy book talk looking with like the green and black gems you can also get tiaras and stuff at the ren fair i have seen more of like the elven circlets there than i see anywhere else online or at least there's a lot more variety at the ren fair so if you were looking for crowns those are a couple options okay so now that we've talked a lot about ren fair clothing i thought it would be fun to put together a couple outfits so i'm gonna start with this dress this is a dress from linen nave i like this dress because it's got these side lacings i don't want to cover that up so i don't want to put on a full bodice that will cover this stuff up so maybe a belt or an apron or something will help make this dress into more of a costume so i'm thinking what if i wear this skirt underneath and then i could hike the skirt up so you can kind of see more of the underskirt this skirt is from linden tree designs i have a video of an interview with the brand owner and what does it mean to make like zero waist patterns so if you're interested in that kind of thing you should check that out so we've got the skirt under not that you can tell and more things this belt is from Costurero Real. They're an Etsy brand. I'll also link them, but this belt is like very, very cute. Let's try that on over this. Okay, that's kind of cool. Tuck this up. Or maybe I can stick my skirt hikes on here. Let me grab those from my other belt. Mm, I don't know where the other one is. So we're just gonna do one skirt hike. Really pull that through there. So I've got the skirt under here. I've got the dress. I've got belt and the skirt hike. I'm feeling a little bit like Wendy from Peter Pan. So I'm thinking maybe I turn her into like a Lost Boys pirate kind of look. So I made a baldric last year for a pirate outfit. So I'm gonna go grab that. I made this and I can't remember how to wear it. <laughs> yeah, that works. Okay. And then finally, I'm gonna add my boots because these are the boots I wear for everything. Ta da! So I think. That's like a pretty good outfit. Not my best outfit I've ever made, but I did just kind of piece things together just now with stuff I had lying on the floor from this video. <laughs> I would wear this to the Ren Fair, especially on a hot day, wearing all linen because both the dress and the skirt are linen. Everything's pretty comfortable. I don't feel too restricted or anything. So this would be really good for my location temperature. And then my theme is kind of like if Wendy joined the Lost Boys, I guess. Like you could do this with just a normal belt as well. You don't have to have something that's quite as like elaborate. And then you can still see the lace up details on the side here. And I've got my little skirt hike. Next outfit, this is a peasant dress that I made, but this is a pretty easy garment to find. I'm going to add either a bodice or a skirt. I'm gonna try this bodice and we'll see how that goes. This is already a pretty good casual Ren Faire outfit. I could just go like this. However, it will obviously be more exciting if I add some other stuff to it. So I have this skirt from Hot Topic. I could try that. That's kind of hobbity. That could work. Okay, I'll try that. So we've got a peasant dress, a bodice, and a skirt. So I made these two pieces. This is from Hot Topic. And let's add some belts. I made all of this. I got this from from a kit at Tandy. And then I kind of just made up my own thing for these guys. I recycled some bottles from like a make your own cocktail kit. So that's where these bottles came from. Pretty much everything that I use to make this is also from Tandy. Another hobby to get into if you like collecting hobbies, but you can also just buy a belt and buy potion bottles on Etsy. With my same boots, this like makes a pretty cute hobbit or like tavern girl kind of costume so that's also pretty easy everything i made except for the skirt but they're all fairly easy pieces to find you could probably substitute just like a normal vest or you could buy a bodice like this at the ren fair this is going to be the last outfit before i talk about men's clothes a little bit and we'll bring micah in for that you really don't have access to like get a bodice or anything and you still want to dress up kind of ren fair like this is an option for you this is a very modern kind of dress it's got like a little cottage core puff sleeve top but the skirt is pretty narrow and I've got plaid circle skirt from Santa Flor. Tank top, bodice top thing. This is not corseted at all. It's literally just got a stretchy top. Basic tank top, except that it has ties on the top. 
right, I changed my mind. Didn't feel like the blue plaid was really the right vibe. So I've got this skirt instead. This is one that I made. It is literally just a rectangle with a waistband on it. Because this dress is longer, if I hike it up, then it looks purposeful. So I think I'll do that. Tie this sash around my waist and that'll help. Add this belt back with the skirt hike. Again, you don't need to use as fancy a belt as this. Anything will do. But this is the one my skirt hike is attached to. So this is what we're using. That's kind of a Ren Faire outfit. I think it's pretty good using no actual like made for Ren Faire stuff. If you have stuff that's like this, that's more of cottage core that you can find pretty much anywhere kind of stuff. A good investment would be to get skirt hikes because you can just thrift a belt and then add skirt hikes. Skirt hikes are maybe like $10, $15 for a pair. So they're super affordable. And then it kind of helps make any basic outfit look a little bit more Ren Faire because it looks a little bit more wenchy, I guess. <laughs> okay, so really quickly to go over men's clothing. This is Micah's base outfit. He wears a white t-shirt so that he doesn't sweat all over the shirts. He wears a pair of joggers usually. He also has one other pair of pants that he wears. Linen dress pants, I guess. These work pretty well as long as we cover the pockets and like the belt loops and all the stuff that makes it look modern. But joggers were recommended. Oh, I can't remember the name of the guy, but I'll put a picture and then I'll link it in the description. But we started doing this before I even saw that video. So good for us. Then we just add stuff on top of it. Micah usually likes to dress like a pirate. We have two go-to shirts that he wears. This silk shirt, but it's not very comfortable, right? No, it's not very comfortable. So <laughs> he only wears this one. If I'm gonna also wear red and black, then we match. But this one, baby hat. But this one is not terribly comfortable. This is a shirt from Pavi it's a women's shirt, but it works super well. You also wore it for the fairy picnic we went to. Any fantasy kind of thing, we use this shirt for Micah because it works pretty well. Oh, I got you. Look at that, it's a bat. Look at this baby. <laughs> you mean they're good. Nope, not anymore. Bye. Once we've got this outfit together, we can just add on accessories. I made a bunch of pirate accessories a while ago, but you could literally just thrift belts and use those. Baby bat, what are you doing? Here's the same baldric that I put on for the other outfit. And then we just layer on more belts. The more exciting buckles you can find, the better. I made all of these belts and I just looked for belt buckles online. Some of my belt buckles are from Tandy and some of them are from Etsy. I think these are from Etsy, I'm not really sure. I liked this one, it's flowers technically, but I thought it looked like barnacles, so I got it to make pirate belts. And this one just kind of looked like the belt that Jack Sparrow wears. And then Micah also usually carries the bag because I don't like carrying things. It's not really piratey looking, but adds to his outfit. And finally, his shoes. He just wears normal leather boots. You'll probably wear your docks depending on the outfit. So one pair of brown, one pair of black, and that's pretty much everything covered. So Micah's outfits are a lot more casual than mine, mostly along for the ride rather than for costumes like I am. But he does like dressing up and this is fairly easy to achieve. You wanna do a spin? Wow. Nothing twirls when I spin. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that this video is helpful. I also will be making another video that goes more in depth into brands that I like. I don't know if you have other specific questions, let me know and I'll try to include in that. I'm also gonna be doing another accessories video in addition to like a specific brands for clothing video. Some other last minute tips. Wear clothing that is easy to wash if you can throw it in the machine and that's great. Don't wear clothing that you don't want to wear into a porta potty because that's usually the only bathroom. If you have wings, hand them off to somebody before you get into the porta potty. Uh, what else? And don't wear rompers because of the porta potties again because then you have to have somebody unzip you and then you have to walk half naked to the bathrooms <laughs> unless it's a romper that you can unzip yourself. It's just a lot easier to not. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more of this series or more of my videos generally, then please subscribe. And also I've got a list of so many things in the description. So please check that out. Check out the brands that I mentioned. A lot of the links that I have are affiliate links. So using them helps me out a little bit as well. Sometimes gets you a discount. So, you know, win-win. And that's it. Wait, let me grab it. No! Can you say bye-bye? Thank you for watching. All right, see you guys in the next video. Bye.